Hello, my name is Trevor Coffee, and I'm a new YouTuber. Today, we're going to be talking about Christianity. I am going to start with a drawing a diagram, and it will be easy to explain. We start here. This bubble is the this, a way that we were designed by God in a wonderful way. And this was the original design for our lives and the path to take. But here we see sin distorts that. So now we are in brokenness. which can be displayed in various ways. Examples include wealth and power, drinking, pornography, and stealing. Just, there's so many things. And we do these things to cope with the brokenness, but they don't work in the end. They just keep us stuck there. But there's hope. There's the gospel. The gospel is Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He rose on the third after the third day after he was nailed to the cross by the people who didn't believe in him. Then he after he rose on the third day, he ascended into heaven. He died for our sins so that we could be freed and that so we could go to heaven too. We are then able to, bear with me, sorry, look at the diagram here. So we can then recover and pursue. God's original design through the gospel, through reading God's word, the Holy Bible, and we can then find God's design for our lives. Thank you. The Bible says, repent and believe in the good news. Mark 1 15. Next, for you are saved by the grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift not from works, so that no one can boast. This is found in Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 9. Also, it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is found in Romans 10, chapter 10, verse 9. As you can see, find something in the Bible. You just look at the number, like an example, Mark 1, sorry, 1 is the chapter, then 15 would be the verse. So it's easy to locate them in the Bible. The word is God's way of communicating through us, and it is our hope as believers. Thank you. I am now going to be reviewing the first chapter of Genesis. So there are six days that God created the earth and the animals, the people, everything. And to begin on the first day, there was a separation of light and the dark. Not that the sun and the moon and the stars are not in place yet, but just the day and the night was set or the darkness and the light was separated. And then on the second day, there were um, an, there was an expanse that was called heaven. The expanse separated waters, and that were under and above that expanse. And then that the, that was the second day. The third day, there was 
uh, of the fusion of seas and the waters that are all compacted into seas and land formed. And then when on the land, there was vegetation. There were, you know, all the plants, the seeds for the different varieties of plants and and uh, everything. Then we uh, see on the fourth day that um, there was the stars, the moon, the sun. They were all in play. And they set the sun is to rule the day. As we know, their uh, their signs for these are the seasons, the days, the years, etc. So with the moon and the sun, they just are a sign for the seasons and the days and the years, etc. And the stars. So that was the fourth day. The fifth day, there were sea creatures and birds. The God blessed them and said, "The multiply across on the on the earth." And so that was the fifth day. And the sixth day, we see the beasts and the crawling things and the livestock on the earth. So the, then, yes, and then humans, Adam and Eve. So we see God creates man and woman and his likeness, and he gives them the dominion over all of the things that he created on the earth. So we he breathed into Adam the breath of life, which he made him man from dust, and then from his rib he extracted that and formed Eve. And so they were together with God in the Garden of Eden at this time. And they had not sinned. Well, uh, yes, they had not sinned against him. And at that, that at the time I am reading, it's um, he just was going to create man. He then rests on the seventh day, which is in chapter two. I'm going to be going through the Bible from beginning to end. And I'm on doing this mission as I talk about it. So, thank you. So, to finalize this, the coronavirus has so much hype. And it's got people anxious, worried. There's so much negativity out there. And I just want to shed some hope to you guys that God has this under control. He has a plan, and this is inevitable. So, we are biblically supposed to not fear and to not worry. We are supposed to put our trust in God and know that he loves us through this. So, I hope this can just bring encouragement and hope to you guys who are struggling with this virus. Just know that God has a plan. And it, uh, it might not be revealed easily to us, but just know that these are signs. Now, these are signs for, you know what we talk about the last days and when Jesus comes back. And this is exciting news. This is the great news of uh, that is described in the Bible and that, you know, we can look for signs and we can see them and it just shows that God's promise to us, his his love. And so just take this message and, you know, read the Bible, um connect to God, you know, pray, repent of your sins, which just means to ask for forgiveness. And, you know, he died for us. He took that and he gave, he gave us a second chance. He gave us, he's giving, he will give us chances. Thank you.